Hello folks, it's Mike Kaylee 7 here. Today I'm going to do a response video to Moto Mengi. In his uh, video, he reviewed his 2000, I believe it was an 18 Goldwing Tour DCT, and I'm going to review my Goldwing Tour DCT from 2019. I currently have uh, 15,200 miles on it. I bought it in April of 2019, and so over about a year and a half, I've done about 15,000 miles. Uh, this year I would have done more, but you know, COVID, so. So let's do a little bit of reviewing, shall we? What I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll kind of try to go from top down, so the windshield. Uh, I never had a uh, electronically adjustable windshield. The only windshields I ever had on my Harleys were uh, either quick detach or not at all. So uh, this windshield, wonderful. I absolutely love being able to manipulate the height of the windshield whenever I want to. If it's hotter, I lower it. If it's colder, I raise it. If I'm making a moto vlog, I usually have it higher because it blocks the wind noise. It's just wonderful. And uh, I have no trouble with the height of it. When it's at the full height, I can still see over it. If I want, I can kind of cinch down and see through it if I need to. You know, in heavy rain and stuff like that. Uh, it's just an overall wonderful thing to have. So, uh, yeah. A plus on the windshield. Now, the wind overall, I notice that the wind on this bike uh, gets to me more than it did on my Ultra Limited. I don't have the big Batwing fairing anymore. But it doesn't seem to be a problem. I've ridden this bike at temperatures as low as 20 and uh, haven't really had a problem with the wind. It'll generally hit me in the, in the outside of my arms, but when I have on my gear, it doesn't really affect me. So the wind overall that this bike uh, gets to the driver or the rider, not really a big deal. So that's the windshield and the wind in general. Not too much wind at all on this bike just enough and if you want more you can always get more next thing down would be this um, smaller wind thing it apparently is supposed to divert air to you more when the windshield is up high so you can still feel some wind i haven't really noticed a huge difference although i do notice it makes a little bit more noise on my helmet so uh you know it's there if you need it some people like it some people don't need it eh, i've used it a few times i don't have a problem with it so let's go to the front okay the front end here some good and some bad it's got a double wishbone hossack suspension unlike your traditional forks it absorbs the bumps very very well there are those who will tell you that uh, traction dynamics makes a, an upgrade for the suspension that makes the bike smoother and easier to handle I haven't tried it yet. I would love to go down to Georgia and ride their test bike to see what the difference is. And eventually I will probably do that. But for now, I have no problem with the, uh, the suspension on this bike. Handles fantastically. Uh, when you slam on the brakes on this bike, there is no dive down. It's amazing. You could be full lock in, in a turn, slam on your brakes in the turn, with your bike leaning a little bit to the right or left, and you're not gonna dive down. It's amazing. So I love this su uh, suspension on this bike. It's wonderful. Next would be the brakes. I love the brakes on this bike. Uh, they are linked brakes. So no matter what speed you're going, they're linked. Unlike the Harley that I had, which was linked at higher speeds, not linked at lower speeds to allow you more control. This bike, apparently they got the linking just right because I've never had a problem with the braking on this bike ever. As a matter of fact, the braking on this bike is so confidence inspiring that uh, I've learned to rely on it. It really is stunningly amazing how well this bike handles, uh, both in braking conditions, cornering conditions, avoidance, uh, emergencies, just very confidence inspiring. Uh, something I don't like about the about the front of this bike is the, the headlights. They're okay, but they're not quite bright enough. And they don't shoot far enough down the road for my liking. Also, when you're in a corner, you can't see through the corner very well with these lights because they're just focused straight ahead. 
So what I would like to see is either an aftermarket thing or next generation have uh, headlights that when you're in a corner, they kind of direct you into the corner. I know Harley makes that stuff now uh, where it lights up into the corner because people complained. So uh, I think that would be a nice addition to a new bike or to this bike with a aftermarket or maybe even OEM if Honda comes up with something. Seeing into a corner at night is a really important thing. All right, next, the mirrors. No problem with the mirrors, they do fold in. And that's where one of the problems could be. Uh, the mirrors, since they fold in, you can you know, take it into more tight spots or whatever. But on the right side, if you turn in the mirror and you push the handlebars this way, it'll force the brake to engage. And you could have a terrible accident. So that's a flaw. But Traction Dynamics makes a, a little plastic add-on that'll stop the mirror from doing that. In case, let's say you're in filtering situations and you hit somebody's car or mirror with your mirror, pushes in your mirror, you go down. So that kind of situation, I guess it's supposed to stop that, but I don't filter. So, uh, and I never fold these mirrors in really. I've never really seen a need to. Okay, next. All right, here's a complaint. The um, engine covers here, they have a, a place where you can stick a light, a fog light. But it doesn't come standard with the bike. I think it should. Or at least with the top model. I don't know. Maybe it already does. But my bike didn't have that. I don't have the airbag model. So maybe with the airbag it comes with it. I think it should have it with um, every iteration of the bike. So that kind of stinks. And on the side here, you can buy an add-on that will make this a turn signal as well. I think that should be standard on the bike. I don't think uh, it should be the way it is. But maybe it's, you know, it makes it cheaper that way. I don't know. So that's uh, something. Let's see, what else? The engine. Let's talk about the engine of this bike. It's a six cylinder uh, boxer engine. It's a flat six, so horizontally opposed. And it makes a, a great amount of power. And the power to weight ratio on this bike is phenomenal. So you can go from zero to 60 in about three seconds which is pretty darn nice. And it's quiet as, you would not believe how quiet this bike is. Well, you've heard my videos. Even when I'm really getting on it, you can't really hear loud noise. I mean, you can hear the engine, yeah. But it's never loud, which is exactly what I wanted. I had years and years of loud pipes. I had the Reinhardt's a number of times. I had the D&D Fat Cats, or no, no, they were Billet Cats. And uh, it was nice, but on a highway when you're going for miles and miles and miles and you have that that loud noise droning in your ear your your uh, ears ring when you're done you get a headache your whole head feels like it's been beat up so uh yeah a 600 700 mile day not even a 200 mile day with loud pipes that does not feel good i don't like loud noises in general anymore so i'm glad that this bike is nice and quiet i don't want to modify the exhaust at all and the engine is really powerful. Uh, if you're in sport mode and you go just cranking it from zero, my God, I'm not joking. The blood goes to the back of your brain and you start to get tunnel vision. That's how fast this bike goes from zero to 60 in sport mode. It's amazing. So I have no problems with the engine whatsoever, which uh, kind of, I guess it goes along with the transmission. You'll notice I have a lack of a uh, clutch here. I don't have any gear shifter down there. This is a DCT, dual clutch transmission, automatic. So this bike, uh, I never have to shift on my own if I don't want to. Wonderful, oh my God, it is so amazing. It is effortless. And now I can focus on my riding. I can focus on the corners. I can focus on enjoying. I can focus on all these other things and not have to worry about getting the timing just right, not shifting too early, not shifting too late, not shifting down when I mean to shift up or shifting up when I mean to shift down, which happens once in a while when you get self-conscious. So uh, no problem at all. This bike makes uh, touring so easy because you don't have to do this all the time in traffic. And there ha have been times when I've been with people who had uh, manual and they were, you know, griping about how their hands started to hurt in this stop and go traffic. 
and they're, oh, I hate stop and go traffic because it's so hot and, it, and, it, and my hand hurts and I don't have that problem anymore. I absolutely love this. It has spoiled me. I don't want to go back to a manual transmission anymore. Maybe a, like a quick shifter maybe, but I don't want to go back to manual. I mean, I, I'll do it if I have to, but I really love this DCT. Automatic is awesome. And you push this if you want to go up a gear. You push this little button down here if you want to go down a gear. So you can still manually shift it. Let's say you're, you're on a highway and you're doing 70 and you want to pass a truck ahead of you. You just hit that button once or twice and the bike drops down two gears and bam, you're going. It's amazing. And then once you get to where you want to be, it automatically shifts back up or if it doesn't in, in your timeline, if you want it to shift up faster, you just push this little button right there. It's amazing. You can also use those two buttons for what they call walk mode. Walk mode is where you want the bike to reverse or go forward, but you don't want to use the, the transmission. You don't want to be in gear and, and revving it. You put walk mode on, you push the button for walk mode, and then you push this one to go forward or this one to go backward. And it walks it forward or backward for you. And having that reverse, awesome. I have used it more and more. You can nose into a parking space downhill now and not have to worry. It's amazing. You could be on surfaces that are kind of rough and bumpy and it's hard to back the bike up. No problem with this thing. You can walk it forward if you need to. I've used that a couple of times. So it's just a great feature that comes standard on the bike. And I think uh, I'm spoiled. I really am spoiled. All right, let's stay on this, uh, this cluster of, of buttons here, up, down, left, right, and there's enter in the center. <laughs> and that's to uh, use all of the features in the computer on the bike. So there's uh, audio source, audio adjustment, uh, navigation features all these different things that the computer does and you can access that two ways one is when you're riding the bike through the little toggle over here when you're not riding the bike or when the bike is at a stop you can use the main button here the it's a, a scrolly kind of buttony thing which is kind of clunky but it works so uh that's what that's for and i didn't realize that i could use that while i was riding because i'm an idiot didn't read the book but let's say you're looking at your map and you wanna zoom out the map. You can't use this while you're riding. So this over here, you push the up or the down and it zooms up and down. You can't pan left, right, which is kind of annoying, but at least you can go up and down and, and see where you are. I use that a lot when I'm riding where I have a general idea where I wanna go and I wanna see if there's a road that goes in that general direction. And I'll look on the map and say, oh, that I'll take my next left. I mean, you can program it too. But sometimes I just want to figure it out on my own. So that's a good feature. There's the home button, there's the return button, and then there's the horn. Hang on a second, you gotta, you gotta hear this horn. Turn the bike on here. This horn sounds like a car. It's a dual type of horn. So here you go, ready? That's pretty loud. My Harley, uh, my Road King, I got an air horn that was probably as loud as that, but I had to add that on. This comes standard and it's that double horn. It sounds like a car. It doesn't sound like a motorcycle. So that's a good thing. Uh, I've had to use it a couple of times, but not really because I find that uh, you can anticipate a problem before it happens if you're really paying attention when you're riding. And you, if you see somebody that you think might come over on you, you know, I always have my thumb over that button I've got my hand ready for the brake. I've got my foot ready for the brake. I don't have to worry about a clutch. And I'm watching them as I, you know, as I pass them. Uh, I try to stay out of situations like that. If I'm in somebody's blind spot, I'll try to get either next to them or ahead of them as quickly as I can so they don't stay there and they might come over on me. I've used it a couple of times, but I haven't really needed to because I avoid problems before they happen so far. You never know, right? So that horn's a great feature to have. Uh, let's see, anything else on this cluster? There's a source button, so you can go from uh, satellite radio to your Bluetooth. I think there's an auxiliary you can plug in. Then there's the uh, Apple CarPlay, which I don't really use as much as I maybe should. So it's got a lot of features there. All right, you'll notice here an add-on. This is from uh, X-Strike. I believe this is a Ciro product. And it's, you know, your standard drink holder. 
goes on the left side. I got the left side mount kit, not the single right one, because I have a foam mount over on the right side. So let's talk about what's on the right side. You've got your uh, mode button, so you can toggle through the modes. You've got rain mode, sport mode, econo mode, and tour mode. Tour mode is the standard mode that it's in. It's always in that mode. I think there's a way you can manipulate it so that it's always in whatever mode you choose, but I, I always have it in tour mode, and I flick it into sport mode, so it goes like this. You push it once, you go into sport mode. And then if you want to go back to tour, you push it three times, and it cycles back into tour. I've learned how that works, and so I, I've gotten good at using it. So you can flick into tour mode, you can flick into any mode you want, or you just have to know which button to push and when and how many times. So that's a, a very nice feature. It's got the uh, kill switch, the start, ignition, and kill switch. The great thing about this bike is you pull in the brake, you hold down the start button, and the bike starts up. You don't have to go to the center knob or anything. You don't have to put a key in. It's got a key fob, and that's standard with this bike. There's no place to stick a key in. So if you've got the fob, just get on the bike, and you hold that button down while pulling in the brake, and the bike starts. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Notice it's pretty quiet too, right? Okay, with the bike started, I can kind of show you some of the things that are going on here. Okay, over here, you've got the temperature or the speed that you're going in cruise control. And you can toggle through them through these buttons. So you've got the select button to go up and down how the arrow moves it, and then the set button here, you can change it to temperature or the speed that you're going in cruise control. Push select again, and now I'm down in my, my uh, mileage, so I've got the overall mileage, I've got my trip, and my trip, there you go for that, then I hit select again. Down here is my miles to go until empty. There's my uh, front tire, or rear, I can't tell from here because I'm not wearing my glasses, but it tells you the tire pressure for both tires. And it doesn't start working until a couple of minutes of riding, because I guess it's got to figure it out. But if there is a problem, you will see a light blinking over here to let you know that your tire pressure is lower than it should be. I usually keep mine at 41 PSI cold, and uh, that came in very handy in Bethune, Colorado, where I noticed that my light was blinking all of a sudden, and I looked and I saw the temperature going, uh, temperature, the pressure going down, 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 down. It was like 28, 27, 26, 25. Like, oh, geez. Pulled over on the highway as quickly as I could, and I realized right then that I had a flat tire. Thanks a lot, Moose. So that's a great feature. Over here, you'll notice the light. That's cruise control is, is on. So you push it one time. It's like push and forget. So that's always going to be on until I push that button. And then it'll be off. Every time I start the bike, it's already off. Or every time I start the bike, it's already ready to be set. How do you set the cruise control? You push this thing down, and it sets the cruise want to make it go faster, toggle up, up, up. You want to make it go slower, toggle down, down, down. So that's a nice feature to have. All right, let me turn off the bike here. There's another great feature with this. You, you do like this. Now it's getting ready to start the bike. You can start the bike now if you wanted to, or just hit it again. So this is in ACC mode which is, you, you can access stuff. I Somebody knows what ACC stands for, but whatever. Uh, I can still use my stereo, and I can still check the navigation and do my settings and stuff without having to draw full power from the battery. So that's a nice feature. Navigation is kind of clunky, I will admit. You're going to turn this knob to zoom in, and you turn it to the left to zoom out. I can also go left and right by toggling left and right, which you cannot do on this cluster, unfortunately. See, 
doesn't do it. I'm pushing the button, it's not doing it. But I can go zoom in and zoom out. If you want to program it to go somewhere, you push the enter button, and then you can set your destination, points of interest, save to favorite, set to home, and you can go back. So there's that, you, you can change the setting to 3D map, it's GPS enabled, so the satellite navigation, and it tells you to scale. One nice feature about this, which I'm sure that a lot of these bikes have now, it's um, if there's traffic ahead of you, the bike will say, hey, there's traffic ahead of you, do you wanna have an alternate route? And you, you can say yes or no, which is pretty nice. I did that once coming back from West Virginia, and it took me down this road that was the best road I have ever been on. It's one of those roads that you can never find again, but man, that thing was awesome. 50 miles of nothing but switchback twisties. It was amazing. So the navigation feature is clunky, but it's adequate. All right, let's do some more stuff here. Over here, you'll notice I've got my heated grip set to one and it stays that way until you change it. So I can always change it by hitting heated grip and now it's off heated seat now it's off apparently my passenger heated seat is on so I don't know how the hell that happened must have kicked it now that's off so that's where you control and see how your levels are and uh, let me tell you I love heated seat oh god if I could get air inflatable with the heat that'll be the best of all worlds I'm waiting for that to come out that'll be awesome more on the seat later you notice it tells you that your stand is down. It also tells you if your trunk is open, uh, your side bags are open, it tells you that. So that's a nice feature. Here's your temperature gauge. It never gets up beyond you know where it's supposed to be, at least from what I've seen. Of course, it's liquid cooled. Uh, you've got ABS, parking brake is on. That's that red light there, which uh, you can buy something now where the bike won't start, I think it is or won't engage the transmission or something if you have the parking brake enabled. That way you don't ride with the parking brake enabled. That's the parking brake. That's a nice feature. It's got the hill assist, so your bike doesn't roll backwards if you're on a hill, which I don't really have a problem with. All right, over here on the cluster, like I was saying, you've got your neutral, you've got uh, drive. This is for you know automatic and neutral. So if you're in automatic and you want to go into neutral, you just hit that button. If you want to go back in the drive, you hit that button. And then if you want automatic transmission or manual, you push this button and then you can start using these toggle switches here and here to shift the bike if you're in manual mode. You can still use them in automatic mode too. And it's got this feature where even if you're in manual mode, it won't over rev. So it'll flip, it'll switch gears to protect the bike in, in case you're stupid. There's your hazards. Like I said, cruise control. Uh, reset, whatever. My mode button, sport mode. So here you, you toggle. Go sport, econ, rain, tour. So that's a nice feature to have. So that's pretty much the cluster. For audio, you can do um, speakers or headphones, uh, which is nice if you have the you know your Apple CarPlay going. Your info button. You push that, tells you what your radio preset is. Push it again. Fuel consumption average, trip B. Fuel consumption uh, right now, what, what your, your fuel consumption rate is as you're riding. Elapsed time, how many, how many minutes the bike has been on. So that's pretty good too. I really enjoy the features of the bike. It's not too overwhelming. I remember on the older models, you would see it looked like the space shuttle, you know, just buttons everywhere. This one here, it does have buttons, but it's it's more manageable. At least it feels that way to me. Notice you've got three buttons here that aren't buttons. You can add things on, like if you get the fog lights, you can push the fog lights. You get a home link system where you push that button and your garage door does stuff. Uh, I don't know. That's probably for other kind of lights that you could get. Who knows? But uh, you've got extra buttons if you need them. And that's pretty much it. Oh, by the way, you say, well, what's your phone mount? This is a TAC form. TAC form phone mount. Love this thing. And this is metal. This is not plastic. It's beautiful. Holds the phone great. You can 
change it, you know, up, down, left, right, all that stuff. So that's a wonderful feature to have. This here, people hate this button because if you push it here, the compartment won't open. If you push it here, it might open. But the way you do it is, just remember, always push the left side and it always opens. Now there's mods you can do changing, changing something and it's pretty easy, but I don't care because I learned when you close it, hold both sides like that. When you open it, left side, pretty easy. You got your little uh, charger cable thingy there. So that comes with the bike. That's the only one the bike has, which kind of sucks. I think that's the only one it has. And you can put stuff in here. Bad thing about this is it doesn't lock. So you can get a, a lock feature, but it doesn't lock standard. Over here, this is your gas filler area. To access this, you have to go over here. Push this button, opens up this compartment, which I never put anything in. And then you push this button and it pops this open. Cool thing about this is, take that out, put it right there. Ta-da! Only problem is the, the big rubber gasket that goes around the, the pump handle will sometimes hit this, so you have to be kind of careful when you're putting in a pump. But uh, pretty darn good. Takes, I think, 5.25 gallons, if I'm not mistaken, of um, regular gas, you know, regular unleaded gas, 87 octane. So there's that. Apparently, you can use that openy tanky button thing as a code to get in if you don't have your key or something. There's videos about it. So there's that. I think I've covered everything on here. You'll notice the double wishbone suspension. Those things go up and down with the bike. And you can see them working like crazy, but you hardly feel a thing. Wonderful. Of course, traction dynamics will tell you it's substandard, it's bad, you're gonna die. The uh, steering head bearing. Oh. So I had a problem. I tied the bike down in Bethune, Colorado, using the handlebars. And that pushed the steering head bearing somehow and made, made the handlebars loose. I got it off the truck and they said, oh my God, it's loose, we have to fix it. I said, well, we'll fix it. But it's not covered. It's not covered. What do you mean it's not covered? I just bought this thing. It's not covered. So I call my dealership in North Carolina. They call Honda Corporate. Honda Corporate calls Colorado and says to them, hey, what are you trying to tell this guy? The uh, boss of the whole place was reaming out the poor tech. I felt bad for her. It, it is covered. So if you have any problems with it, it's covered. And that's the only problem I ever had because I tied it down using the handlebars. You're not supposed to do that. I bought tie downs. There are brackets that you can install over here. You put them in right over here. I have them. I just haven't put them in yet. And then you can tie the bike down. I should probably get on that because if I have another flat tire, I'm gonna, definitely going to need that. All right, I bought these aftermarket. These are Rivco highway pegs. You can move this thing this way or this way, depending on where you want your foot to go. And it does kind of cover up the Honda sign, but oh well. And they're they're pretty handy. And you, you kind of flip them out with your foot because it's got this little grabby thing. Problem is the paint starts wearing away there. Oh well, no biggie. You'll notice here, that's an uh, engine guard. There's a metal um, bar, it's a U-shape, comes out. This covers that, and you'll notice I've scratched the crap out of it. Look at that, oh my God. You can kind of see through it. <laughs> Probably gonna have to get a new one of them. Anyway, uh, I try not to do that anymore because you'll notice I scraped the crap out of my uh, exhaust shield. Because, you know, when you're when you're leaning over in a corner and there's a, a hole or a dip in the corner, the bike goes even more down. And so that's how that happened. Over here, this is my rider peg. And you'll notice it's got this extra thing on it. That is my titanium uh, puck saver. This is made out of titanium. The screw is set back in such a way that... Uh, you're really gonna have to scrape this thing uh, in ungodly ways to mess up that bolt. The the bolt that was there originally, this whole thing wasn't here. There's a bolt right there and it's called a, a road sensor, they call it. 
basically you hear it scrape you know you're going over too far anyway the top of it goes in like that you have to drill a hole to get that screw in and you'll notice i scrape quite a bit and that's doing fine that's doing absolutely fine gotta love it so there's that brake great engine never hot I've never burned myself. I've never melted anything on these pipes ever. You can touch pretty much everywhere and it's it's never hot. The bike is amazingly cool. Awesome. There's another guard. I think I've scraped. Have I scraped? No, I haven't scraped this one. Good. I didn't go that far over, thank God. Passenger pegs, they never get used, but they are pretty handy. And when they fold up, it's almost like you can't even see them. A lot of people think, oh, that's the passenger peg. Nope, that is. That's pretty nice. The seat. A lot of people change out the seat. They hate the seat. They think, you know, it's too hard. I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, the position I ride in is upright. It's not leaned back like I used to. My tailbone feels fine. The heated makes it even better. The backrest is a standard... OEM backrest and it can lean forward if you need it to see I guess I could put that forward if I wanted to have it really forward you can manipulate it there's a screw back there but uh, yeah it's, it's pretty handy it's there when you want it it's never obtrusive and uh, like I said I haven't had a problem in 15,000 miles I haven't had a problem which is pretty sweet love that seat this thing here kind of sucks. If you're a passenger, it's not really much of a grab rail. And if you're trying to strap stuff to the bike, you can. You just got to get it around behind that and around behind that, which which I have done. And it's not a problem. You can buy ones that come out more, but I don't really need them. I don't have a passenger. You can put bigger armrests on here. They stick out more. Eh, don't need it. That's a heated seat as well for the passenger. All right, let's go around here to the side. All right, so here's how you open up the saddlebag. There's a button right there. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. Push that when you have the fob on you, and it opens up. I didn't like the side-opening saddlebags when I first got them. I've learned how to live with them. I'd prefer to have a top-down approach, but oh well. As you can see, it's already accumulated with junk extra gloves these are my shoes for when i want to go walking i don't think i'm going to be able to fit an alpine stars boot in there it's just not going to happen oh well so a lot of people complain saddlebags are too small there's not enough storage you can always buy aftermarket add-on this thing only bigger they have them so you can get them if you want to there's your reflector. You can buy lights for that. You can buy lights that go here. All right, moving over here. How do you open up the trunk? I don't know if you can see that. That's a button right there. Push that, this thing opens right up. Not a whole lot of space, but enough space. When I uh, traded my Gemma, my Ultra Limited, for this bike, I wasn't expecting to trade that day, but I fell that much in love. So I had to take all the stuff out of my Ultra and stick it in here. And you know what? Everything fit. So that was one way I knew that I was going to be fine. So everything that I would normally carry on a day-to-day -day basis fits in both bikes. So that's fine. I've got this. So a student gave me a gift. This is my Flogenics. I love this stuff. Really, really great for cleaning the bike. Different mounts and stuff, some rags, da 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 da. So I can put my camera bag in there, no problem. I did my uh, 6,260 mile road trip with Moose 3971 over 15 days. Um, yeah, 15 days and 16 states and two countries. And I just used this bike. I did have a 30 liter bag here, and on top of the 30 liter bag that was here, I had my laptop in a Timbuktu courier bag. And I was fine. Absolutely fine. And I did use everything I brought with me. So I packed well. 
But if you're too up touring, I don't know. I, I don't know. I really can't speak to that. You'll see here, it's got, this is where it, it connects or latches or whatever. You can put a light up in here. You can buy OEM extra light or you can buy aftermarket light. Moose 3971 has one of those. I haven't done that yet. And uh, to close it, I don't, I don't like slamming it down. I don't like to go, here's how I do it. I put it down nice. It's not closed yet. And then I just go here and I push. You hear a click, click. You're all set. Sometimes if I have uh, something in there, like the helmet is in the wrong spot or whatever, and I have to really push it down, it has trouble opening. So you have to hold it down as you push the button to open it, and then it'll spring up. So it's just a little trick you learn. Oh, by the way, the bike is filthy, as you can see. Oh, well, the paint on this, not really that good. It's, it's plastic, you know, it's not fiberglass, like Harley's uh, fiberglass a lot of times, and the plastics are better on the Harley's, just better on the Harley's. But, you know, it's all right. I, I used to be more about the look of the bike, and I'm now more about the function of the bike, the riding of the bike. And I think I started that even when I was on the Harley, and so I didn't clean it as much as I might otherwise have done. There's also not a whole lot of chrome on here, so, yeah, some people say, don't you hate the fact that black shows all the all the spots? No, because, you know, unless you're really right up on it, you can't really tell how dirty it is. I really don't care. So, this is me. Over here, I just put that in. This used to be just a, a red reflector, and I changed it to a light. Pretty easy to do. I got it through X-Strike. I think it's a Ciro light. I also bought this thing from X-Strike. It's a license plate holder. It's, you know, nothing fancy, just a regular thing. I don't even know why I got it now. It's probably illegal in some states because you can't cover up any part of the license plate in a lot of states. So, oh well. So there's that. I think I've covered pretty much everything. The tires on this bike originally were Bridgestone tires. But when I got the flat and I had them changing it out in Colorado, it was right around... 9,500 miles, and uh, I thought, you know what, screw it. Change out the front, too. So they changed both tires, and uh, they put in Dunlops. So these are Dunlops. I didn't realize that till recently when I was putting some air in, and I read the thing, and I'm like, oh, my God, they're Dunlops. I thought they were Bridgestones. I would prefer to get Michelins if they ever come out with them for this model. So far, I don't think they have come out with it for this model. I keep checking, but once they do, I'll be interested to see what the reviews are, maybe a year or two in. So this is the bike. And after 15,200 and something miles, I am in love still. Madly, madly, madly in love. This bike is awesome. I wanna ride this bike all the time. I don't like to drive my car because the bike is way more fun. As a matter of fact, I used to have a Volkswagen Atlas, but after I got this bike and I rode it all the time, I thought, why am I spending all this money on a car I never really use? So I downsized to a Tiguan, and uh, I love the Tiguan for tra uh, trash runs. I have to go to the dump to do my trash. We don't have trash pickup here because I'm not in a city. Put stuff in the back, that's not a problem. I want to get a pickup eventually. Probably next year I'll get a pickup truck, a Honda one, because... Volkswagen doesn't make a pickup. And I don't want something huge, just something that I can put barrels in if I need to. Shout out and thank you to Memphis Mike. He gave me that when I first got my Goldwing. I was feeling kind of sad because I got a lot of negative comments when I got that bike. And he sent me that out of the blue and it was just awesome. And he sent me a nice little medal, which I keep in the bike for good luck. And, uh, oh, I have a, a bell that Moose got me, but I haven't put it on yet because I don't know where to, to fasten it. <laughs> There's really nowhere that's capable. Anyway, I'll figure it out. And before I go, I wanted to do one last shout out to Flip and the Blue Mule. Flip sent me a sticker and a poker chip, which I have in the bike as well. Flip, you're on the wall of fame now. Isn't that cool? Flip and the Blue Mule. Love that flag. And this is where I put all my stickers now. Whenever I get stickers that are kind of interesting, I put them up there. 
All right, Mike Kaylee7, talk to you later.